Hey there, Memphis, it's Lori Forrester, the wine coach. So excited to go live and be with you virtually. I'm disappointed, just like all of you that were not there live, live together, but uh, we all need to do our part and keep everyone safe and stay home. So for now, all we can do is this virtual tasting, but you know what? It doesn't have to stop us from having a great time with delicious wine, some fun foods that I'm gonna highlight here in our pantry pairings tasting, and community, because we can still be together online for now, and when we reschedule, we'll be able to be together in real live person, give each other hugs, hopefully, and, and do what we normally do at Vintage 901. Chat me up in the window so I can see who's here. I'd love to know what you're gonna be sipping during our live tasting. Super excited to introduce you to three wines that I have ready for you. And three pantry pairings, what does that mean? I kind of rummage through my pantry because uh, I just don't feel like cooking right now. Kristen, I see you're watching. Um, give me a little chat in the window so I can see if my comments are working. But I rummaged through my pantry and I picked up some fun foods. Because you know what? We always think that wine has to go with fancy food. But it doesn't. It can just go with whatever you have in the pantry, okay? So that's what we're doing today. Uh, I know we've kicked off the evening with some great toasts already but wanted to let you guys know that uh, that I'm here. What are you drinking? Kristen's here, Belinda's here. What wines do you guys have in your glass? Uh, I don't know that I've seen any comments yet, but I would love, love, love to know what you guys are drinking. Hey, Belinda, all right, you're here. What do you have in your wine glass this evening? We're gonna do a little tasting of my pantry pairings but I want to give a little time for all of our Vintage 901 fans to hop on and join me. Uh, I'm so glad to have you. We've got five people there, so let me know what you're tasting. I want this to be a two-way street because otherwise I just feel like I'm drinking alone and you guys don't want me to do that. Um, so I'm so thrilled to be here for our first virtual wine tasting for Vintage 901. So I rummaged through the pantry. I picked out four different fun, easy snacks and paired them with some wines, some of which we would have been having uh, at Vintage 901, some of which are very similar to what we're gonna have at our rescheduled date. I see Kristen is drinking some uh, Scout and Cellar Sparkling Rosé, perfect, because I got a little bubbly myself. I'm not sure what Belinda has, I'm sure she'll let me know, and the rest of you who are out there, chat me in the window and let me know what you're drinking. It's okay if it's a cocktail or beer, uh, hey there, how you doing? <laughs> connoisseur, Atticus Connoisseurs, I love that handle. That is just awesome. And you're always so great about liking everything on our page. You're drinking the Russian River Valley Blend of Pinot Noir. Oh good, because we're gonna try a Pinot Noir here in a minute, uh, but it's from Oregon. All right, so now that uh, we got you guys here, we're getting ready to hear what you're drinking in the chat window and just any questions that come up, anything, throw it in the chat window. Maybe I'll address it right at the moment, or maybe I'll get to it a little bit later in the presentation, but we want this to be super informative and fun. And all right, pantry pairings. First things first, because I'm getting thirsty. Let me show you what I found in my pantry. You might have something similar to this. Cape Cod potato chips, anyone? <laughs> now, we I know some of these foods are like comfort foods, right? And this is a stressful time. We're stuck at home with our families. We can't go do what we normally do. We can't be at Vintage 901. So I love Cape Cod potato chips. And so when I found that as my inspiration, one of the pairings that is just delicious, and I love it because it's shabby chic, is potato chips with champagne or sparkling wine. And so I actually have this Patriarch. It's not a, an official champagne. It's called what we uh, classify as a Cremant. And it's a Cremant from Burgundy, so Cremant de Bourgogne. And Cremants are sparkling wines that are made exactly like champagne, but in different regions around France. 
and we can only call champagne if it's made in the right process and it's made in the region of Champagne, France. So the rest, if they qualify uh, for, for going through the champagne process, are gonna be a Cremant de whatever the region. So you can find Cremant de Loire, Cremant de Bourgogne, Bordeaux, Alsace, so many different regions making great Cremants. And here is the great thing. They're a lot more affordable and they're just as delicious as champagne. And so my, my inspiration here, and hopefully you guys saw our wine sandwich video that was posted earlier. And if you've been with me before, you know about the wine sandwich, but maybe you need a refresher. <laughs> so the, the wonderful thing about potato chips is right. They, you have that rich fattiness that's there, the saltiness of the chip and sparkling wine and potato chips go together so well because the acidity in this sparkling wine or champagne, whatever you choose to pair it with, cuts through both the salt and the fat that's in the chip. And if you remember, here's how the wine sandwich goes. You always taste the wine first. Then you taste your inspiration, your food inspiration. Let me know what you guys are drinking while I'm doing this. Mm, 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 mm. Gotta love the Cape Cods. Now, second sip of the bubbly. Oh my gosh, the acidity from the salt smoothed right out. More fruit coming forward in the sparkling wine. My mouth feels like it's cleansed of that you know, of, of the fat from the potato chip, it's a perfect pairing. And you know what else you could do, but I didn't have this in my pantry. You can do a wine sandwich with champagne or Cremant or dry sparkling wine. French fries are delicious with sparkling wine. Um, buttered popcorn, just microwave popcorn, maybe you got that in your pantry. Um, fr you know, maybe you have some frozen Orida French fries you can, just bake those up in your oven, maybe toss them with a little Parmesan cheese, put them with a great sparkling wine. So let's talk a little bit more about this Cremant. So this is the Patriarch Cremant. It is a brute, means bone dry. It's from Burgundy. And so the key grapes here are 45% Chardonnay, 35% Pinot, uh, Pinot Noir. And then there's two grapes that are blended in there. That's really about, 80% or more of the wine. You have a little bit of Gamay and a little bit of Aligote, which is another two other grapes that are grown in Burgundy, just for, adds a little complexity to have four different grapes in there. But this is a wonderful Cremant that I can get uh, under $20. So that's the great thing of, you know, a full on champagne, which you guys know I love my Nicolas Fouillat, and we always have great champagne at our events. But this is just a nice substitute for a little less money, which is gonna be nice right now because we're all having to make sacrifices, but you can, don't have to sacrifice the taste. You get a lot of citrus, apple there, that crisp acidity, the fine bubbles. It's really, really a beautiful wine. Put that with your potato chips. Maybe you wanna door dash some McDonald's french fries. That's fair game too. But these are my pantry pairings. These are things that are inspirations for what I just rummaged through my pantry and found. Does anybody have any questions about the Cremant, about food and wine pairing? Um, this lesson, I guess, in this pairing, the inspiration would be salt will tone down acidity in wine. So when you have salty foods, you want a higher acid wine. And when you have fat in the foods, it's nice to have that acidity to cut through the fat. Bubbles also are great. So another great pairing. Um, could be fried chicken. I don't know if anybody likes fried chicken. I love it. So French fries, fried chicken, potato chips, all those things, so, so fun. Fried oysters, actually. We love fried oysters here in Maryland, and that would be wonderful with a sparkling wine. Um, Chat it up in the window, 14 of you here. Hey, 15, thank you so much for showing up. We're doing a virtual wine tasting for our Vintage 901 weekend, and we're gonna reschedule, but we can still have fun together. Uh, Kristen says, love the wine sandwich, thank you. And you always remember and do that every year, thank you. I, it's just, it's crazy. I think I told the story in some of my sessions 
over the years of Vintage 901, but I took a food and wine pairing class. Hey, you're drinking Chateau St. Michelle Riesling. Love it. Awesome. That would be really fun with some uh, potato chips possibly too. You got that sweet and salty thing going on for you. Um, I took a class at the Culinary Institute of America out in Napa. We were learning food and wine pairing concepts and you always have to taste the wine, then you taste the food, then you go back and taste the wine again. And, but it was more complicated because you taste the wine, you spit the wine, because that's what we do in professional settings. And then you taste the food, swallow the food, taste the wine, spit the wine. It just got kind of confusing. And some people were spitting their food, it just got hairy. So I thought, hmm, wine sandwich, wine, food, wine, wine, food, wine. So that's where the wine sandwich was born out at the Culinary Institute of America. All right, so that's our first pantry pairing. Um, the inspiration as far as our Vintage 901 weekend that hopefully you're gonna join us for the reschedge is our sparkling brunch. We always have some great sparkling wine for the Sunday brunch, which to me is just the icing on the cake event of an amazing weekend. And so definitely when you join us, uh, when we reschedule, I hope, you will uh, join us for all three days, especially the brunch. And really, for the Perfect Pairings event, which would have been last night, we always start out with great sparkling wine too. So I'm a big bubbly fan. All right, let's see, Melody's here, hey! It's 3.40 in the Bay Area, a little early for wine. Oh no, Melody, it is not too early. <laughs> this is quarantine time, so anything goes, all right? So Melody, you pop open the bottle. Just to catch you up, we tasted a great sparkling Cremant from Burgundy, France, and I paired it with just some stuff. I grabbed some stuff out of my pantry, and I paired that with some great Cape Cod potato chips. All right, question from Belinda before I get to my next pairing. When you're serving red meat, do you always have to serve red wine? That is a great question. You don't have to. Hey, Melody. You don't have to, but the two are kind of meant to be together because red wine has something called tannins, and that's that dry astringency you get almost, you might perceive it as a bitterness on the end of a sip of maybe Cabernet Sauvignon or Petite Syrah, that little mouth is dry, that tannin binds with animal proteins in things like cheese and meat. And it will smooth, make that wine so much smoother. The wine will clear your mouth of the fat so the next bite of steak is just as juicy as the first in the wine sandwich. Hey Deirdre. Uh, so red meat and red wine are, do have an affinity, but let's say you can't drink red wine for some reason, you get headaches, it doesn't agree with you. What you wanna do is, in general with food and wine pairing, is match the weight of the food, and steak and red meat is weighty, right? With the weight of the wine. So that's why red wine does come to mind first, and then the bigger the dish, the fattier the dish, the bigger the red, more tannic red we go to. But if you wanna go white, just go a big, robust white, like maybe a buttery Chardonnay, or something that's really, um, you know, uh, structured and intense and white. That absolutely can be done. And that's a great question, thank you. All right, so we're here with our pantry pairings for Vintage 901 Weekend. Um, and let's see, what what's the quick question? I'm not a red wine drinker, but I wanna start easing into drinking it. Please suggest one for a non-red wine drinker. Well, that thank you, because that is the best segue you could have teed me up for. So my second wine um, that we're gonna taste, and I'll tell you what my pantry pairing is in a minute, is the Stoller Dundee Hills Oregon Pinot Noir. Comes from the Willamette Valley in the Dundee Hills. It is the grape Pinot Noir, and you're probably familiar with that. And we have a saying in the wine business that Pinot Noir is a white wine masquerading as a red because it's low in that tannin factor that I mentioned. It's lighter in body. It's got more acidity than it has tannic bitterness. And so, Stephanie, that was a great question. If you wanted to start going towards red wine, I would start with something light, like the Stoller. Perfect place to start. Or maybe even a Beaujolais. I don't know if you've tried a Beaujolais from uh, the very southern part of Burgundy. Also fruity, lighter, and not a lot of tannin. 
So, Stephanie, thank you so much for that question. Miss you. All right, so Solar is our red wine, and what was so exciting, it is so exciting for our reschedule, is that Solar is gonna be part of the Friday Night Perfect Pairings dinner, which is amazing always, and also part of the Grand Tasting, which would be happening right now, and will be happening again in our reschedule date. So Stoller, I visited the winery. I'm a huge fan. Bill Stoller, who started it, started out in uh, the staffing business and made a lot of money in the staffing business. And one of his dreams was to start a winery. And you know, you know what they say, how do you make a small fortune in the wine business? You start with a large fortune. That's the way it goes. <laughs> hey, Verna, you're back. I love it. So Bill took his large fortune, invested in a beautiful state-of-the-art winery in the Dundee Hills. Melissa Burr is the winemaker, and I got to spend a little time with her when I visited. She's an impressive lady who makes impressive wines. This is their entry level, and then they go on up to reserve and lots of different kinds of wines. I happen to be in their wine club, so I just had this in the house because a couple times a year, I get a shipment of wine from them and I, it's kind of like Christmas when it shows up. Anyway, this is their Dundee Hills. The Dundee Hills line has the screw caps. And remember, if you've been with me before, as I say, screw caps are not social suicide, all right? It's not like my Boone's Farm days. You can still have a wine with a screw cap be a very, very good wine. So let's talk about the Stoller Pinot Noir. Are you guys ready for my pantry pairing? Who's ready? Let me know, hit me up in the chat window. I went into my pantry and you will not believe what I found. I found some beef jerky. Yes, I did. And I don't know if you know, but Tennessee Beef is gonna be one of our amazing sponsors for the event. And beef jerky is actually chock full of protein. This little bag here has 14 grams of protein. And the cool thing about beef jerky is that it's salty and sweet and you have that protein there, okay? So beef jerky, I bet you never heard of beef jerky and wine. Well, now you have because I paired this with the Stoller Pinot Noir, which if you swirl it up and smell, and I don't know if you saw our post earlier, smelling is 80% of tasting. And so you wanna swirl it up, stick your nose in, this is so full of spice, of cherry, of red, we say red fruit, which means strawberry, cherry, all the fruits in that, maybe even some black cherry in here as well, and a little bit of spice on the nose. I'm gonna take a sip. Like I said, Pinot Noir has great acidity and not a lot of tannin. So with beef jerky, it's different than a steak, right? We don't need, it doesn't, need that big red wine, and it's got the sweet and salty thing. Pinot has great acidity, which is gonna help it stand up to the salt and the beef jerky. So I'm just gonna take a little piece here. Pinot Noir, beef jerky. Mmm, 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 mmm. Kristen, I'm gonna answer that. It's hard to eat and talk at the same time. Have you noticed? All right, another sip. Remember, wine sandwich, wine, food, wine. Mmm, so good. The acidity in this mellows out. Fruit, even more fruit comes forward. Makes you just want another sip, right? Uh, uh, another bite, another sip. That's the great thing about wine. Unlike any other alcoholic beverage or any other beverage, I think, wine is meant for food and it's so much better both ways. Hey, Jeff Brandis, how are you? All right, Kristen, do screw top wines need to be stored differently? Great question, Kristen. You know, the big deal in the wine world is that wines that have a natural cork, like this one right here, we wanna make sure that they're stored on their side, okay? And the reason why we do that is those corks, can, if they're not kept wet and on their side, they're going to get dry and oxygen can get into your wine. So with real corks, you wanna store it on its side. Um, you wanna store a wine away from sunlight, at, at a stable temperature, ideally between 52 and 57. It doesn't have to be a fancy wine fridge like I have in here, it could be a, a closet. You want about 70% humidity, again, so your cork does not dry up. 
But Kristen, great question. Our solar with the screw cap, you can store it like this, you can store it like this, you can store it really any way you want. You're good. It's not, screw cap's not gonna dry out. Um, the reason why a lot of people started moving to the screw cap is those corks can get infected with something called trichloral anisole. And we call it TCA for short, thank goodness, because that's a mouthful. But TCA is a compound that once it gets into the cork, it will then get into the wine and ruin the taste of the wine. This is why the restaurant will pour you a little taste when you order wine at a restaurant. I miss restaurants. Uh, we will be back there, I know. But when you go out and you order a bottle of wine, they pour you this small taste for you to smell and taste. They are looking for you to say, yes, this is not corked, this is okay. Well, how do you know, right? A lot of people are very intimidated by that whole process. When you smell the wine, if it smells like a damp mildew basement, really dank, it's sort of just off, it's probably corked. Wines with a natural cork, about five to 7% can be affected by cork taint, being corked, that's what we call it, or TCA. So great question, Kristen, thank you. So I, I know Jeff joined in and a couple other people joined in while we were going, so let me just back up for a minute and review our pantry pairings. We're here celebrating Vintage 901, an amazing wine experience weekend in Memphis, Tennessee. Was to have taken place today, uh, well yesterday, today and tomorrow, but of course because of coronavirus we're rescheduling, but we are having amazing events all weekend so you can have some fun at home until we can all be together. Um, let me review, but real quick, I think there's a question. Let's see, Stoller Dundee Pinot Noir has clove spices, yes, and raspberry jam. There you got, red fruit and spice. Love that, Celeste, thank you so much. You are amazing. <laughs> I, one of my favorite visits ever, and I don't join those wine clubs lightly, Celeste, because you know you and I are in the wine business. We probably have a lot of wine at all times, but Stoller is one of the ones that I absolutely have to have. All right, Jeff, just to catch you up, our first pantry pairing, I just went through my pantry and grabbed some fun stuff, was my potato chips with my dry sparkling wine, my Cremant from Burgundy. And then I just got done tasting the beef jerky, the Jack Links I found in there. Yeah, I did. I got all kinds of stuff in our pantry. And I paired that up with Stoller. Now I hope Melissa Burr, the winemaker, wouldn't be upset about that, but I don't think she was. She's a cool, cool chick, like really amazing. And she was gonna be in the medical field until she fell in love with wine. And as we all know, um, those of us who are in the wine world, it definitely grabs you in and it will just change the whole trajectory of your career. Okay, Stephanie, do you have a preference for old world or new world wine? Is one more enjoyable to drink? Ah, oh, geez, we could sit, sit and talk about that all night, really. Um, I, hmm. I would say it depends for me. I probably lean a little bit more towards Old World, but Oregon especially is one of my absolute favorites in the New World. Um, I think they're both amazing. So many amazing different wine regions. It just depends on what you're looking for, right? And the style that you like. New World tends to be more fruit forward and, and in many cases more oak. And then Old World tends to be more earthy flavors, less oak, and very, very specific tastes and styles to the actual place that it comes from. Um, so I think it depends, but I guess, even though I do love the Old World today, I've got two New World wines and only one Old World wine. So, and I love all three of these, so. I guess that's my problem. I just love everything. All right, so we did our uh, Patriarch Cremant with our potato chips, our Cape Cod potato chips. We did our Stoller Pinot Noir with the beef jerky. And uh, thank you, Tennessee Beef. We're so excited to have you as a sponsor. And I know Carmen from Tennessee Beef, I don't know if you're out there watching or you're gonna watch the replay. She loves the idea of doing beef jerky with the wine. So, and I think it's just a fun, cheeky little pairing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, this is something I found in my pantry and it's really, I don't know about you guys, you know, have you noticed that you're sleeping different, you're eating different, and 
by the way, thank you for giving me a reason to put on real clothes. <laughs> because if you're like me, you're probably wearing a lot of sweatpants, maybe daytime pajamas, nighttime pajamas. You know, you're not leaving your house. So you're not getting, so it was so nice to get all dressed up today. My jeans still fit, okay? So I'm super excited about that. And so I guess I'm doing okay. But one of the little snacks that we as a family have been indulging in, because we got a big old box of it from uh, our BJ's Club. That's right, Cheez-Its. <laughs> Anybody else love Cheez-Its? Let me know in the window. This is just an old standby. I don't know, something about it reminds me of like high school and the 80s and we must have just ate a lot of Cheez-Its. This and Cheerios, those are the two things that bring back lots of memories for me. Anyway, so I saw these and we've been all enjoying them. So I thought, hmm, what am I gonna put with my Cheez-Its? And I found this delicious Segacio Sonoma Zinfandel from Sonoma, California. Segazio, one of the founding families, Italian families that came to Sonoma and, and started wineries. And this was inspired by, um, we have a Sebastiani Zinfandel that, that Sebastiani's gonna be at the grand tasting, but also their Zinfandel is gonna be at the brunch. So I thought this was a good inspiration for that. And I also have some chocolate that we're gonna try with it too. All right. So let's talk about the Zinfandel. Zinfandel, to me, is a quintessential California grape. Melody, you're out there in California. I'm sure you see tons of Zinfandels from all over, but especially in Sonoma, this is a specialty. There's a lot of um, talk about it being DNA related to an Italian grape called Primitivo, if you've ever tried one of those. But this is our claim to fame in many areas of California, Zinfandel is known for its concentrated fruit, its really uh, amazing ability to be um, jammy and mouth filling. And let's take a sip. Now, oh, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's just, wow. It's not sweet, but that concentrated fruit just gives you the idea of sweetness, right? It's just amazing. And so I thought this would be fun and have enough heft um, to deal with the cheese. And there is real cheese, real cheese, 100% real cheese. At least that's what it says on the bag in here um, to go with my cheese it. So let's do our wine sandwich. And if you haven't chatted me in the window and let me know what you guys are drinking, I'm drinking the Segazio Zinfandel with a little cheese it. Let me know in the window while I'm doing my wine sandwich what you guys are drinking. Love me cheese it. So delicious. It's got so much concentrated fruit. It's virtually the same wine before and after the cheese it. Really handled it well, didn't change much at all. Maybe toned down a little bit from the salt, right? The acidity maybe toned a little bit but absolutely stood up to that. But this would be great with braised meats, with barbecue, lots of other foods. Zinfandel, Segazio, Sebastiani, um, Pedrincelli. There's, there's some great producers out there. Definitely one of my favorite California uh, specialties and great with the cheeses. But the other thing I found in there that my husband bought for me, because the one day he was going shopping and I said, with everything that's going on, I need chocolate, okay? Just, but I don't want to eat a lot of it. I just wanna eat a little of it every night. So he went and got me, Melody, you're gonna like this, some Ghirardelli chocolate. And this is their 72% cacao. That's the amount of, you know, that chocolate bean that's in there, but it's a dark, bittersweet chocolate. So it's not a sweet, sweet, like milk chocolate. I, that's not my style chocolate. But lots of people think you can just put any wine with any chocolate and it's gonna be amazing. No, 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 no. The sweeter the chocolate, the sweeter the wine you want to have paired with it. Because when you're doing pairings, I talked about matching the weight, that's one thing. I talked about how salt 
in our first two pairings was toned down by the acidity in the wine. But when you have um, a dry wine like our Zinfandel and you want to put chocolate with it, you want that dark, bittersweet chocolate. And so this is the coup d'etat. This is the amazing pairing of my chocolate with my Zinfandel. Maybe I'll wait a minute to do that. I know we've been on. We, okay, Melody has a comment and or question. Let me see. Uh, in our household, we're typically unable to finish a bottle of wine in one sitting. I've purchased a couple products that can claim to extend the life of wine. I'm not sure if it works or not. Any practical tips? Great question. I love that question. And I get a lot of smart Alex in my wine classes, as you might imagine, and I love sense of humor that say, what's leftover wine? But Melody, you're absolutely correct. Not everybody's drinking a whole bottle of wine. Maybe you just want one glass tonight or two glasses and then you want to save that for the next day or the next day. There's a lot of different things you can do. Oh, here it is. And I upload a lot of them in my book, The Sipping Point, A Crash Course in Wine. But one of the low tech things you can do is you can buy a half bottle of wine. I don't know if you've seen the bottles that are half of a traditional size. This is a traditional size bottle. It's what we call a 750. And that's because it's a 750 milliliters. Have you ever seen a Magnum, which is two of these bottles in one, a 1.5 liter? That's what we call a Magnum. But half bottles are 375 milliliters. They're half the size. Get one, drink the wine, enjoy it, clean it, make sure it's clean and dry, and have it around so when you do have your half bottle of the Stoller Pinot, you can put that in the half bottle. <clears throat> because the enemy of wine is oxygen. So if I just leave this bottle, see how I have all this air in here? I just leave that in there. That's giving a lot of air time to work on ruining my wine. But if I pour it into a smaller vessel and cork it up, you have a much less of a wine to air ratio. Then there are things like the vacuvin and the, um, the wine preservers where you can just put a little um, uh, argon or inert gas to kind of squirt and it blankets the wine and protects it from the oxygen. Those are helpful. No matter what it is, once it's open, put it in the fridge because that lower temperature will help stop the deterioration, even if it's red, and then just take it out a couple hours in advance so it can go back to the temperature you want. The other thing uh, that I've invested in is something called a Coravin. And the Coravin, let's see if you can see here, is a wine needle. There's a needle here that goes down into your wine, and I'll show you. Can you guys see this, I hope? I'm gonna click that on there. You push the needle down into the cork, so this bottle is not open, okay? The Coravin now will allow me, and let me uh, reorganize here so you guys can see. Can you see this? I think you can. Now I can pour the wine without ever having opened the bottle. Can you guys see that? Let me know if you can see that. Now, this is kind of expensive. This one itself is $300, but they make a lesser priced model for $150. I know that's still, it's, it's a good clip, but if you think you're, you're just wanting to do a glass of wine now, and maybe I don't want to have another glass of this for a month, three months, a year, it's totally safe because that inert gas has blanketed the wine and now it's preserved for whenever I want to access the wine again. So this is a high tech, high cost. The half bottle, low tech, low cost. You have a lot of options. Definitely refrigerate. That totally keeps things um, on the up and up and, and in better shape. And then once you've done that, see if I can do it. This is, takes a little elbow grease. You pull that up, unclip it, and this bottle has still not been opened. So that's the core of it. It's pretty cool. It was invented by a rocket scientist, like for real. He's a real rocket scientist, but he invented it when his wife was pregnant. He, oh, you're seeing my husband's Jameson barrels there. Um, <laughs> if you guys are whiskey fans. Um, his wife was pregnant and he just wanted to have a glass of wine here and there and he just felt bad opening the bottle and letting it potentially go to waste. So he created the Corvin. 
super, super quick. Oh, Lauren wants a giveaway for one. I don't know. We may have to figure that out for Vintage Dino One. That would be a great idea. Um, all right, so our Zinfandel is one of the reds that I absolutely love with dark bittersweet chocolate. And there are some dessert wines like port, which we always have at the end of our perfect pairings dinner many times, um, or other things that can go Madeira. We had a great Madeira. Other things go with chocolate, but for dry wines, this is a super great option. So our Zinfandel, a little bit of chocolate. Mm. Any questions? Chat me up in the window. I'm here. You got me all to yourself. <laughs> Where am I going to go? I love it. Mm. That is so delicious. I mean, look at this amazing, not so nutritious dinner that I'm having. <laughs> Uh, potato chips with my sparkling wine. That could be popcorn, that could be french fries, remember, fried chicken, anything fried and salty is great with champagne or cremant in this case. Then we had our amazing beef jerky. Last night I made a grilled salmon. Great pairing with Oregon Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir in general, but I remember being out in the Willamette and they did the salmon outside on the grill and having that for the first time, I think, as a pairing at a Pinot Camp, where they bring you out there and teach you about the wines, and at the Stoller Vineyard, and I just thought it was amazing. And then Zinfandel was great with our cheeses and great with our chocolate, so it's, it's a versatile wine. It's such a versatile wine. But all these pairings, albeit kind of funny and, and uh, interesting, you can kind of relate this to your real food or your real dinner. All right, so let me go back to sipping my sparkling wine. Anybody have any questions before we pop off here? I know there's so many other great things going on this virtual weekend, but I definitely wanted to be here. I normally do two seminars on the Grand Tasting. So for the rescheduled date, I hope you're gonna join me for one or both of those seminars. And we always have fun, interesting and educational topics for you to learn about wine wine and food, etc., cetera. And, and I can't wait to see when, I'm hoping the fall, I'm hoping the fall or, or before, but I know there's 12 of you still here and some of you watch this on replay. So I just wanna, from the bottom of my heart, let you guys know how much I love my time in Memphis. I love my Memphis family. I cannot wait to be with you all. It's, this is so difficult to be stuck here. Is it okay to switch from white to red or back? Ideally, officially, you should start sparkling, move to your whites, your rosés and reds, your sweet wines last. But, you know, I figure I'm a professional, I can go back to sparkling wine. But when you're doing a wine tasting, you wanna go in that progression. Because if you start with red, it's going, it's so big that you, when you go back to the white or the rosé or the bubbly, you might not be tasting it the way you should so um i know i know stephanie we do always pack the house the seminars are so popular i love that that people are just so excited to sip and learn and you know the grand tasting floor there's so many amazing wines but twice during the evening they get to come with me and really focus specifically on some of the wines and thank you to west tennessee crown for all your amazing partnership and amazing wines that I get to feature all throughout the weekend. Um, and everybody, volunteers, all the sponsors, everybody that comes together, this is a community event and that's what I love about it so, so much. Um, I can't wait for your next seminar. Me too, me too. And it's gonna be, think of, you know, I guess if there's something good that comes out of all of this is that it's really gonna make us appreciate our time together. So, uh, you know, stay strong, stay home. Um, we can all be alone together. <laughs> and thank you for letting me have these pantry pairings with you this evening. I hope you picked up a little tip here or there. I'm gonna be still out there virtually on the Vintage 901. Um, if you have questions, put them in any of the post windows. 
I'll be monitoring that and all the other great things that are happening because I think we have an auction coming up in a little bit. So uh, many of you know this quote, but I'm gonna say it again because it's something that I've built my business on. There's an old proverb that says, "Many uh, over a bottle of wine, many a friend is made. And I've made so many great friends in Memphis over the time of our Vintage 901 from start to today. But it's true, share a bottle of wine with someone, even though you think you might have nothing in common with them, it brings us together. So I hope this virtual tasting brought us together, brought some fun and levity to your evening. And I can't wait to see you in real life, life and for the rest of this virtual tasting. So cheers to my friends and enjoy your evening and I will see you super soon. Cheers.